Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks this day that your spirit has gathered us in this place. We give you thanks for the word that has been read. And we pray now, O God, as I speak these words, that you move and work among us. O God, remove from me anything that would keep your word from being spoken truly. And Lord, remove from us anything that would keep us from hearing. Open our ears, open our hearts this day so that we might be prepared for what you have to give us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So Jonah was having a really bad day. The word of God came to him that day and said, Jonah, I've got a job for you. There is the city of Nineveh. It's not a city of your people, but it is a city of the people that God loves. And I want you to go to that city of about 120,000 people, that city full of the enemies of the people of Israel, and I want you to proclaim that God is displeased with them, and if they don't straighten up, God's wrath is coming on them. And Jonah didn't want to get this word from God. Jonah didn't want to hear this. It doesn't say it in what Connie read to you, but if you read in the fourth chapter of the book of Jonah, Jonah is angry at God for suggesting that he go do this because he doesn't like those dirty Ninevites and he doesn't want them to uh, repent and he doesn't want God to relent from their punishment. So Jonah, when God comes to him, says, no, I'm out, and he runs. He decides to take the hard way when the word of God comes, his own way. And so he heads out to sea to escape the word of the Lord. And he tells the crew that's what he's doing. A few verses later, we learn that from what we read. He tells them, I'm running from the Lord. And so when the storm comes up and the sea is churning around them, they look to figure out what's going on. And all these non-believers, these people who don't believe in the God of Israel, believe in the God that we worship. They finally come to Jonah and they said, we, we drew randomly and we discovered God telling us through that, that you're the one who did this. What's going on? What did you do that God is tra- threatening to destroy our boat? And Jonah said, yeah, it is my fault. And at that moment, though, he didn't say, let's turn the boat around and go back. He didn't say, you know, I'm going to do what God asked me to do. He insisted on taking the hard way of making his own way, and he kept on going. He said, you know what? Just throw me in the ocean. Right? Give him the choice between saying, okay, I'll go back and do what God wants me to do, or taking his own life. He says, I'm just going to go in the ocean because I'm going to be in control. I'm not going to do what God wants. I'm not going to help those people in that city. Just throw me in the water, and the storm will calm. Well, if you read the story, the people in the boat don't want to do that because they know killing somebody is not something God wants. And so they try to row back to see God raises the storm even more so they can't get there. You see, God is letting Jonah have his way. Jonah doesn't want to go back. God says, okay, Jonah, you don't have to go back. I'm not going to let them bring you back if you don't want to come. And so at last on the boat cry out, please God, don't punish us for what we're about to do. And they hurl Jonah into the sea. And the responsive reading we read together, it talked about that. Jonah talked later about the sea swirling over in the waves, closing men down into the water. And there he thought he'd die. But of course, God had another plan. And so the story, you know, from children school, the giant fish came and swallowed him up and there at the bottom of the sea. Three days and three nights, he'd finally run out of ways to run away from God. And there he was at the bottom of the sea. We've been together on this little end of summer sermon series, looking at some big decisions that happen in the Bible. Big moments in the life of people in the Bible and big decisions they are confronted with. In this story, of Jonah, already made a bunch of decisions. There's already been a bunch of times in this story where he has had to make decisions and he's made the hard and wrong one every time, right? He tried to run 
God wants. He's tried to go away from God's will for him. Until this moment, he's made the wrong choice. But here he came at last in the moment where he the sea, where nowhere else to go. And he decided to get down on his knees. You know, we would understand if his response there, sitting in the belly of that fish, would be to get pretty sad. In fact, I would be surprised if he was kind of sad. I would be in the middle of that kind of place. We wouldn't be upset at him if he got pretty angry either. We would understand it at least. In fact, I've known people whose life goes from bad to worse to fish. And is to rage at God, right? To raise our fist at God and say, God, why are you letting this happen to me? How am I ending up here? I thought you promised me good things, and here I am at the bottom of the sea in the belly of a fish. What God is the deal? But Jonah didn't get sad. He didn't get angry. The big decision he made was to get down on his knees and pray. Chapter 2 of this story starts with just that. Jonah prayed to God. And that prayer he prayed was part of our responsive reading this morning. You remember those words we all closed that reading with. He prayed, salvation comes from the Lord. When Jonah had finally gotten to the place where he couldn't run anymore, where he couldn't go any further, where there was no other way for him to say no to God, he finally got on his knees and said, God, in you I trust for my salvation. Not in me. Not in myself. Not in what I can do. In you I will place my trust. Even here at the bottom of the sea. And in praying that prayer, Jonah discovered that God had never forgotten him. That God had never at any moment in this story forgotten who Jonah was or what his desire was for Jonah's life. He got there at the bottom of the sea because God was with him all along. This is a thing in the story that most surprises me. That storm that he encountered, that very thing that threatened his life was God's doing. Now, I want to be very careful when I say this. You know, there are bad things that happen in our life that I don't think is God directly doing to us. But if we read the word and we believe it tells us the truth about who God is, this is not the only place this happens. We know that sometimes the storms and trouble of life are God trying to get through to us. The storms and troubles in Jonah's life was God trying to get him to a place where at last he'd stop saying, no, 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 my way, my, my way, my way, and say, God, your way. And so the storm in Jonah's life was actually a sign that God was with him. The very trouble that he thought perhaps was a sign that God's wrath was upon him, that God's anger was upon him, was actually a sign of God working with him to get him to the place where he might actually trust in God. And so his story did not end in the belly of that fish. God brought him up out of the sea and sent him on to do the work that he was sent to do. Because God had never given up on Jonah. God had never given up that the thing he had desired for Jonah's life would come to pass. And so God kept working with him and on him until he could finally work through him. Until Jonah finally got to the place where he stopped leaning on himself and leaning on God. Now when we tell this story, most of us know this for a very long time. If you were kids in church, you heard this in Sunday school. And sometimes these stories from the Bible can feel to us like a kind of children's storybook faith. Right? We sometimes can hear them and we have this reaction that, well, that's all good for little kids. But what about adults? What about people who are dealing with real life? Say to me, well, if you just, God's going to work it out for you, doesn't ring true to our lives all the time. Right? This morning, I know there are people who knows what it knows what it feels like to be at the bottom of the sea, like Jonah was. 
there are people who know what it feels like to have your best laid plans go from bad to worse to fish food, right? There are people who know what it is to struggle. There are children in our community right now who are going to go to bed tonight nervous about waking up and going to school because there's a bully somewhere that picks on them and they don't know how to deal with it. There are children in our community right now who know where they're going to eat or don't know if they're safe in their own home. This morning when I came several people already this morning before we prayed, before we came out up here to pray for our dear brother and sister and their son, I had other people in the congregation coming up to me and sharing their concerns with tears. There are people who know what it is to be in the midst of the storm and the struggle and to wonder if God has forgotten them or not. This is not a story that we have. Children's stories. And yet, we are people of this story and of this book. And I would like to be able to say to you, if you just pray, everything's going to be perfect and you're going to just walk in happiness and joy all the time. I would love to be able to tell you that, but I read this book and I know what happens in real life. And I know what happened to Jesus Christ. I know what happened to the disciples and the apostles. We will struggle and we will face storms. And so the question for us is when we get to that place where we can't run anymore, where we can't run on our own, what do we do? And I would say this morning, my invitation would be you, to you would be to follow Jonah's lead. Get down on your knees and pray. Pray for God's strength. Pray that you, God, are the source of my salvation and my strength in the midst of this storm. I am not going to lean on myself or my own resources, but only on you. I knew a couple once in my ministry before coming here. They were hardworking people, church-going people tried to raise their kids right, like every family. They had some of their own messes in their family. But they'd looked forward to life. They'd worked hard, and they were looking forward to retirement. And they'd made plans to travel. They'd made big plans to travel. They'd talked about the many places they were going to go, the things they were going to do now that they were finally free, and they'd saved the money, and they could afford to do it while they were still healthy enough and they were going to go see things they'd never gotten to see, but only heard about in their lives. And they were so excited. Until a diagnosis came in. He had cancer. And it was pretty advanced. And they couldn't go do those things that they wanted to go do. They were sad, yes. I think they were angry, too, but what they did was they said, God, if this is your plan, now this is our plan. Because you are the source of our life and our strength and our salvation. And so if this is the plan, then this is our plan now. And so instead of taking all those trips, they took care of each other through those days and it wasn't pretty a lot of the time. And really no one in the world knows about it except for me, who was grace, blessed enough to know them and a few members of their family. It's not a story anyone's ever going to write in a book. And yet in their either. God was there with them through each of those days when they leaned on him for their strength. They discovered in him the strength and their story went on just a different way than they expected. And so today, as we are worshiping together and gathered here, as we are praying for one another, I know some of you know what it's like to be at the bottom of the sea like Jonah. And I know you know what it's like to not be able to change it. What I would invite you to do is to get down on your knees with Jonah and pray with him. Say, you know what, I can't cure the cancer. And pray to God as a source of my salvation and my strength in the midst of this, and I can go forward. 
I can't get rid of the person who's picking on me at school, but I can pray to God for him to be my source of salvation and strength in the midst of this. I can't fix the relationship that I have destroyed and broken, but I can pray to God to be my source of strength and salvation in the midst of this. I can't stop that temptation that rises up in me, causing me to want to do the thing I know I shouldn't do, but I can pray to God to be the strength that I don't have and the source of salvation that I need, and I can go on. I can't get out of the bottom of this ocean, but I can pray to God to be my source of strength and my salvation. God did not give up on Jonah, and God has not given up on you. Let's not give up on him either. Let us pray. Lord, in the hardest moments of our lives, when the walls are closing in, when we've gone from bad to worse to worse, O oh Lord, we can turn to sadness, we can turn to anger, or we can turn to you. And so, O oh God, give us the grace this day. We believe that you have a plan. We believe that you've not given up on us, O oh God. So help us not to give up on you in the midst of our hardest days. But let us, like Jonah, turn to you in prayer. Let us rely on you as the strength of our, sal of our lives, as the source of our salvation, as the hope that never fails. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen.